Hello and welcome to Your Financial Future for a Secure Retirement. This is the very first edition of this. It's brought to you by Banker's Life. There's no life like the Banker's Life. On this video series, this first edition, we're going to be talking with a couple of very knowledgeable people when it comes to your retirement. Lots of Social Security questions, lots of Medicare questions, lots of savings for retiring questions, all things retirement as you prepare to live in your golden years comfortably, again, for a secure retirement. It is your financial future. This is the very first edition brought to you by Banker's Life. So sit back, relax, soak it up. We got two very knowledgeable people here going to bring bringing you a lot of insight. To help us, we brought in Robin Hatfield. Robin Hatfield, a licensed agent with Banker's Life, correct? Correct. We're glad you're here. Thank you. And Anthony Titus, Anthony Titus, an investment advisor with Banker's Life as well. And Anthony, yes, I'll be, um, I appreciate you joining us for the program. Thank you. And we'll talk with you in just a minute, but I'm going to open up with Robin. Had a chance to meet Robin three or four months ago. Robin Hatfield, talk a little bit about, before we talk about Banker's Life and you, your role there, talk about your journey, where you're from and how you ended up with Banker's Life and how long you've been there. Wow, so I am uh, originally from southern West Virginia in the Mingo County area. Um, prior to Bankers, I was in education for a little while nice. and decided that wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. And I moved to Bankers in 2016, took the opportunity, um, and have not regretted it since. So you've been with Bankers Life about five, six years. Correct. Somebody's watching this and they've heard of Bankers Life, but they're not sure what Bankers Life is all about. They've been around for 130, 140 years, Absolutely. something like that. Talk about what Banker's Life is in a, in a nutshell. What's your mission? What's your purpose? Why do you guys exist? Well, prior to Banker's Life, I was just like them. I didn't know much about it either. Um, but as I've, I've been here for now, almost six years or, mm -hmm. or a little over, um, Banker's is all about uh, building a secure retirement for our clients and the individuals, but it, it's all, honestly more than that. The connections we have with our clients, our coworkers, um, it's unreal. Mm -hmm. um, I've been there and just absolutely enjoyed it. My growth as an individual and as a person and what I've been able to do for clients is um, something that I never would have been able to do anywhere else. Speaking of clients and speaking of the people that you help, What's, a, what's the target demographic that you work with? Who do you help the most? Is it age 55 to 100? Is it 65? What is, what is the sweet spot of your clients? Who are you, who you talking to? Who, you, who would you like to have call you for, for help and information? Well, majority of our target base is uh, retirement age. Mm -hmm. That might be 55, that mm -hmm. might be 62. Right or 65 and older. But we always say we can help everybody somebody. We can help mm -hmm. people from zero to the age of 85 and beyond. Um, but mostly we center around retirement needs and purposes and services and what that client may need. Medicare yes. is a very tricky minefield to navigate. I don't know if anybody actually knows how to navigate it. And I think that's purposely done by the government. I'm just, that's just an editorial. I don't know that for a fact. Don't, don't come after me. Yes. Don't come after me, yes. the feds, right? But you know, it, you know what I'm talking about. It's difficult. People have questions. What is the most common question you folks get at Banker's Life about Medicare? Oh, honestly, there's several. Um, the first question is, Robin, where do I start? Yeah. Um, do, should I do original Medicare? Should I do Medicare Advantage? What's better for me? What are the, the costs of, of those? Mm -hmm. What does it cover? There's so many questions there that they don't understand. And there's so many commercials out there that just blend this information together. Mm -hmm. And it makes it so confusing to retirees and Medicare beneficiaries. They, they say, you know, I, I could have this and maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. So there's so much information out there that just confuses them. So I, I have a lot of those questions. And, and here lately, I've had more questions about the TV commercials. Yeah. There's some national TV campaigns out there with some celebrities and people Correct. recognize the celebrities and they keep call this and check with my zip code and I qualify for this and I might not qualify for that. But if you call this, you probably will. So it you get the you get the calls and then where do I begin? So mm -hmm. I, I I can certainly understand that. Speaking of uh, give you a call, I'm going to turn to the camera and give the telephone number 304-757-4134. That's Bankers Life Charleston office 304-757-4134. 
34, call Robin, call Katie. We're talking about Katie a little bit later. Call Kristen down there at the office. And Anthony, you're, are you in that office as well, Anthony? Yes, yes I am. So you're an investment advisor. Correct. Before the show started, we had a disclaimer up there <laughs> that, you know, I hope people yes. had a chance to see that, something about panel discussion. Yes. You're complied to death. You're, you're like the NC2A of the financial world, right? <laughs> so I know you have a, a verbal uh, compliance you need to disclose first. Yeah, I have first. to just disclose that I am a registered representative of Bankers Life Securities and also an investment advisor for Bankers Life Advisory Services. Um, so I have to disclose that on the front that end. Is a lot. I'm glad you did that and not me. <laughs> so with all that being said, speak English and talk to the audience out there about what your role is with Bankers Life. So my role as an investment advisor is basically to meet with um, the Bankers Life clients and kind of review their overall, fi their current financial picture, um, review their goals and concerns to make sure that their current financial picture aligns with what their goals and concerns are. Um, as an investment advisor, I'm required to act as a fiduciary, so any recommendation that I make has to be in the best interest of the client. Mm -hmm. And so I take that very, very seriously. Um, and so, you know, whenever we sit down, the client has to be completely open. Um, I'm not allowed to make a recommendation with just a p part of the, the puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, I've had clients that have come in that um, didn't want to disclose assets, didn't want to discuss certain accounts, wouldn't tell me anything about them, and I had to, you know, I had to shut it down because I just, I can't move forward in that You have process. to have all the pieces of correct. the puzzle before you make a recommendation. That is correct. Yes. I feel like it's unfair to, to you that I asked Robin a little bit about her and I haven't asked you. <laughs> Are you I'm I think boring. You're, you're boring, but yeah. you're, no, you're not because you're a West Virginian. <laughs> Talk about your, where you grew up and uh, you've been in West Virginia your whole life. Yeah, I have. Um, I've lived in a two county radius my entire life. I grew up in Jackson County in okay. Ravenswood. Yeah. And, home uh, of the Red Devils. Home of the Red Devils. I love that. That's a great um, community, by the way. It, it really is. Really nice. We were just down there for a little game uh, on nice. Tuesday night. I, so love it's a slice home. of Americana, I like to say. And, <laughs> um, you, and you live in Wood County? I, I do. My wife and I moved to Wood County 2007, and so now we've got two kids, uh, daughter's 13, son's 8, and future uh, uh, Parkersburg South Patriots. Nice. So looking Very forward good. to that. Anthony, how long have you been with Bankers Life? Um, I actually started out in the business in 2003. Uh, Denny, uh, I grew up as a childhood friend with Denny uh, okay, Harmison. We're, talk we're talking about Denny Harmison. What's, what is his title, Robin? Area what? See, everything. Area, area everything. <laughs> regional director. Regional director of Bankers Life. But, yes. But when I say regional, it's not just West Virginia. You guys are in Pittsburgh a lot. And Pittsburgh, Ohio, Maryland. And Pennsylvania. Uh, Penn, yes. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's everywhere. Jersey. And then, you know, like I said before, there's no life like the Bankers Life. And no Absolutely. one's leading. There's no life like the Bankers Life more than Dennis Harmison. So <laughs> I wanted to give people a reference on who that was, Anthony. Yes. So he, he actually recruited me into the business in 2003. And... Um, I, got, I started getting my securities license in 2011 is when I actually started on, on this side of the business. I'm 62 years old. Well, I'll be 62 on October the 6th as this show is being taped in September. I'm going to maybe ask you some questions that I think other people are, are thinking about. Well, what are the biggest concerns for me getting ready to retire? I have, I've learned that it's not just your nest egg. You've got to put all those pieces together yes. of the puzzle that you were talking about earlier. I may have a pension from there. I may have some Social Security from there. I may have some other income coming mm -hmm. from there. And so you don't, for me, you don't just think about your, what you have saved. You think about what you're going to have monthly until Correct. you pass. And I do some financial planning based on you know, checking out here and retiring at age 66 <laughs> yeah. and living for 240 months. And that'll take, slider me, bar, that'll take yeah. me to 86. And you know, so I do, uh, some, I do some planning. Yeah. But talk about your biggest, what do retirees, what's their biggest concern when they come to you? Um, generally, income is one of the primary concerns. They're always worried about outliving their assets. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, with uh, the way inflation has been going so far, uh, this year, it has put a, a dent in a lot of people's retirement income and savings. Um, so income, inflation, major concerns, um, safety. They want to make sure that their assets are uh, allocated properly um, to make sure that whatever happens, that they're still going to be good for that income. Um, inheritance, that's another huge one. You know, if they pass away prematurely, you know, how are these assets going to be distributed? So there's a lot of issues that affect people in retirement, and that's just part of the overall process that when we sit down and, and have a discussion, a conversation, it's not an interrogation. Um, it's just uh, very similar to this. It's mm -hmm. a conversation that leads me down the path to gather that information and then allows us to, you know, go back and go to work for them. You mentioned inheritance, and you, you mentioned it in terms of 
maybe what you want to leave to your children yes. or your college or university or your favorite charity. Yes. But what if you're retired and you're 65 and a parent passes away or your parent passes away at age 85 and they, they leave their son and, or, or their daughter, they leave you a couple hundred thousand dollars or a hundred thousand yes. dollars. Is, does that, is that always changing with the, the federal government on how that's taxed and how that's worked? Can you educate me a little bit about if I inherit $100,000 after my mom dies, what happens with that $100,000? It depends on the type of account that you're in. Um, you know, typically, if it's an IRA account, uh, in years past, uh, beneficiaries were able to stretch out um, minimum payments over their lifetime to satisfy the IRS um, and the federal government. but. Um, they made some rule changes in 2020, I believe. Don't quote me on that okay. exactly, but it was a few years ago um, where now you have a 10-year window in which you can start a beneficiary IRA, but you have 10 years in which you have to take all those assets out and pay pay the taxes on it. So um, if it's a non-qualified account, it just depends on the type of account. Um, if it's in um, securities, stocks, bonds, things like that, um, and I have to say, I'm not a I'm not a CPA. I'm not a lawyer, so obviously, you know, consult with with one of those. But in general, um, upon the date of the passing of the parent, you get a step up in cost basis. So the taxation on non qualified accounts typically isn't as difficult, um, you know, rather you know, versus an IRA account. Yeah, good answer, Robin. We were talking earlier about Medicare. You get lots of Medicare questions. There's lots of national programs out there. There's lots of information coming to people. Sometimes it's like what do I listen to, what do I, so you get that, you know, what do I do? But one of the primary questions I'm gonna ask you about Medicare is somebody just either retired, should they keep their, if, they, if they're allowed to keep their employer's Medicare plan, should they keep that or should they go to, to the, is it called the open market and find a Medicare plan? What mm -hmm. should folks do? Can they keep their own Medicare? Can they keep their benefits with their employer? I don't even know if I'm asking the right question, but can you keep employer benefits after you retire? Well, yes and no. Okay. Um, well, that it, that, that's pretty clear. Yeah, yes and no. <laughs> See, clear yeah. as much. I know, right? Um, it's going to come down to the individual. You know, so I would have questions for you. You know, Mr. Jones, how, how long did you work for said XYZ company? Are you tenured? Mm -hmm. You know, what does your insurance benefits look like? Okay. You know, it, or were you union? Union yeah. versus group insurance currently? Man. Completely different animal. Um, so I would have, you know, some follow-up questions to you. How, how do you have deductibles? Do you have co-payments? What medicines are you on? Yeah. Do, does your group insurance cover this well? Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> well, let's look at, you know, option A2, option A3. Oh, yeah. Let, let's look at these options to see if this annually is going to be uh, more cost-efficient <laughs> for you than your group insurance. So, you know, um, Everything is a different animal. So every time I sit down with a person, you and Billy Bob and, and Miss Mary could have the, the same insurance, but maybe you work 25 years, he only worked five, and she worked 15. That's a completely different situation. Literally everybody, that's why you have to sit down with everybody. Absolutely. Everybody's case scenario yes. is extremely different. Everybody's case is different. Are you married? Yeah. Does your spouse get this coverage? Do your children or grandchildren get this coverage? Are you a veteran? Yeah. Do you what level of VA do you have? Mm. So with every step that I take, there is a new question around the bend. So that's the fear that, and I've had clients call me, Robin. I made a mistake. What happened? I answered the phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh no! Did you say anything? I don't know, but I got a card in the mail. I have no idea what it is. I've, I get that call at least once a month. Isn't that something? Absolutely. We're having a very insightful conversation with Robin Hatfield. She is a licensed agent with Bankers Life. Also, Anthony Titus is with us. He's an investment advisor with Bankers Life. And you're tuned in. If you just tuned in, we're talking about your financial future for a secure retirement brought to you by Bankers Life. As I mentioned earlier, 62 in October, I'm thinking about retirement. What if I wanted to continue to work some, work part-time, semi-retire, work after 65? How does that affect everything? What's going on there, Robin? I'm, I really need to know the answer to this question because I don't know the answer, and I need to know the answer personally. Well, first of all, you look great for 62. <laughs> Bless your heart. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> I, got I would have never known I have that. good energy for a man my age. I absolutely, love it. Yes. absolutely. But again, that's a very difficult question. I would mm -hmm. have to ask you, you know, what's your health insurance now? Mm -hmm. You know, what are your, what, are your income and your expenses do you, 
do you plan to continue working part time or full time? Those are those are answers that I need to know mm -hmm. in order to make the best decision for you. Um, if you decide to work till sixty five or after, you know, do you have credible coverage? Okay. And if that's a no, we may have to look for options for you because if you delay taking Part B, there's a penalty. However, if you have credible coverage. You don't have to take Part B in most cases. I knew the show was going to be long because there's no yes or no questions. There's no yes or no <laughs> there's answers. No, there's no answers to these, to these questions. Let me ask you maybe point blank. I Hopefully this is a yes or no. If I work after the age of 65, does it affect my Social Security draw? Well, that depends, Jim. No. How, what about that? If I want to work, does that affect how I, what I draw from Social Security? Yes, it, it depends. It depends. <laughs> All right. it depends on if you've started to draw Social Security or if you're delaying Social Security. So I can't give a yes or no answer. Everything, it, it I, depends. I feel like I'm in a, a Lou Costello and Abbott <laughs> a, a skit here. That's, that's beautiful. So it's as clear as, Anthony, this is clear as mud, right? <laughs> you can see why you folks need to be called, right? Yes, absolutely. Wow, this is, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean I'm going to stick with Robin on medicines. Oh. Medicines are a big deal as you get to be 65. There might be a big deal when you're 45, but they, they seem to be a bigger deal for the elderly and people that are in retirement. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the questions you get about that? Does that have to do with just the coverage of your health benefits or what Medicare might cover or whatever you're in, right? Well, just like anybody else, the most common question you're going to get is, how can I get my medicines the cheapest? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and oftentimes group insurance, I've noticed in the past few years, they, they kind of promote name brand drugs. Well, Medicare doesn't promote name brand drugs. So sometimes as you make that transition, you're gonna go from name brand drugs to generic, um, if, if your doctor allows that. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes I see people often just at the wrong pharmacy. They're at a standard or an out of network pharmacy when there's preferred pharmacies for their insurance coverage but they love that pharmacist and they don't want to give yeah. them up. Um, there's also federal and state pharmaceutical assistance programs. Um, if there's a particular medicine, and you know, higher in tier, higher in cost. So if there's a particular medicine, we may have to go directly to the manufacturer and get a 12-month a program or an 18-month program to keep those costs down. There's Social Security extra help programs. There's programs through the state and local counties that help keep medicines reduced. Um, so not all medication programs are income based. So, you know, the middle income individuals, you know, they may be frustrated because they don't qualify for these programs, mm -hmm. but there's other programs out there. There's 340B pharmacies, locally owned pharmacies have their own programs. And sometimes even things like a Kroger program or mm -hmm. a Walmart savings program, it just depends on that medication. Um, so there, there's so many options out there. And then sometimes people are simply just on the wrong drug plan. I had a, a lady several years ago. She's very sick. She's fighting a lot of things. Her medicines were more than 12000 a year at that time I met her. I was able to save her $7,000 by just changing a drug plan, finding a better pharmacy, and finding a couple of programs for her two Tier 5 medications. I applaud what you guys are doing, the service that you provide. You love to help people, and you're really helping people, but they have to give you a call. And like yes. Anthony said, they have to be honest with you about where they are, what medicines are on, what their benefits are. So many questions. I'm going to give the number one more time. Give Robin a call. Give Anthony a call. 304-757-4134. That's the home office in Charleston, West Virginia. The Charleston office is actually located out in Putnam County, West Virginia. If you're just tuning in, we're talking your financial future for a secure retirement brought to you by Bankers Life. I'm going to bring Anthony Titus back into the fold. Anthony as an investment advisor. What are some of the, what is a typical, what's a typical client for, for you, the demographic that you're looking for? Same as is Robin or some people start a little bit earlier calling you about some planning? What is like a typical person it, that would call you? It's basically wise? it's basically anybody and everybody. Okay. Um, you know, we focus on the three phases that money has, life cycle of money, and you've got the accumulation phase, you've got the preservation phase, and you've got the distribution phase. 
as the majority of Bankers Life clients, as she mentioned, are uh, you know in retirement, we're more focused on preservation and distribution phase. But I also work with the younger crowd that are still focusing on the accumulation as well. Right. Um, you know, so really, it makes no difference if you have a desire to retire at some point, whether it's two years, five years, twenty years from now. There's somebody that I'd like to sit down and talk with. Economic conditions probably sway your advice and sway your decisions and recommendations. The market, basically, you can just say over the course of 40, 50, 60 years, it's pretty steady, six, five, four, six, seven, eight percent. Some years are better than others. 20, 2022, the year that we're in now, not a good year economically. Yeah. Would you fair to say that? Very, very. <laughs> Do you, do you give different advice in years like this? Or are you all about the journey? Are you all about the 30-year the plan, the 40-year plan? And then people like me who are close to retirement, this is a tough year. Yeah, I mean, get, obviously, you know, somebody that's, you know, 35, 40 years old, I wouldn't recommend looking at your 401k statement right now. Yeah. But it doesn't really matter. You're not needing that money tomorrow. Um, you know, in general, you know, we don't, it, it's hard to time the market. Mm -hmm. um, there's a study from JP Morgan Chase that from 1999 to 2018, if you just missed 10 days of being invested in the market out of 6,574 days total during that time frame, your returns were cut in half. So it, it's best to set the program up. We may have to modify, we may have to adjust, but we never want to push the panic button, never want to hit the eject button and get out of the market. It's time in the market, it's not timing the market. So again, if we set the plan up properly on the front end, it, it generally hasn't been an issue. I haven't received very many phone calls from concerned clients in 2022, just by the way that we set up, you know, the different types of accounts for, for the clients that I deal with. Someone like me, my age, you know, anybody from 59 to 63, 64, getting ready to re retire. Is there different advice that you give them? I have been saving 10% of my income. Mm -hmm. Never was a lot of income, but I've been saving 10% since I was 23 right. years old. It's not a huge nest egg. But, and I didn't invest in really anything aggressive like individual stocks. And yeah. I just did the kind of moderately aggressive yeah. mutual funds, pretty safe, pretty balanced, yeah. and just... I rode, I've been riding the course for 25 years and yeah. here I am, <clears throat> excuse me, here I am now. Is there different advice you give people like me that are a couple years out from retiring or is it the same advice, just keep, just keep riding it? Well, it, as you approach your retirement age, it definitely, the advice changes a little bit. We try to move from, you know, the, from the aggressive side to the more conservative side because we're going to be needing that money sooner rather than mm -hmm. later. So, you know, if you know exactly when you're going to retire, if you're 62 now and you're like, I have no idea, I may work three years, I may work seven years. That's an ongoing conversation, you know, that we just have to constantly have, you know, because your health may change, every life may change, your spouse's health, you may have grandkid issues, life hits us hard, and it changes a lot of the, the best laid plans that we have. Uh, it affects those. So it's just an ongoing conversation with your advisor, whether that's me or whoever your advisor is, um, you know, to kind of review that. Now, people that have employee plans like 401ks, as I mentioned earlier, I have to act as a fiduciary. And so when someone comes to me and says, hey, you know, I may not be retiring for a few years, um, I still will look at that. I'll still look and I'll explain to them all of their options, you know, say, hey, listen, your plan offers an in-service rollover that we could possibly, you know, give you more investment options or we could possibly reduce risk or we could possibly plan for future income. So we just have to disclose all of that to the client, give them all of their options, and then wherever they're at wherever they land, that's that's the right answer for them. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I approach everything. Robin, we're going to talk about a seminar that Bankers Life is offering on September 27th, and we'll mm -hmm. talk more about that in just a moment. But I have one more question for you, and we've talked, we've kind of danced around Social Security. You know, there's a lots of, as Anthony is explaining, there's lots of retirement incomes possibly coming into you after the age of 65, whether it's a pension or your own retirement or social security or alimony or inherent, what there's all, again, there's no, everybody's different, right? Exactly. But you think social security, I mean, everybody talks about, oh, is it gonna be there? Oh gosh, it's gonna, I hope it's there. You know, I think, I hear that and I think it's gonna be there. I just don't think that's, it's too big of a animal to, to go away, right? Mm -hmm. And then, so let's talk a little, just generically about social security. And, and how that worked with you guys and what you what you look for in Social Security and when's the best time to start drawing it and is it all based, I'm sure it's based on 
needs and income for the, but Absolutely. talk about why people should take it early. If they do take it early, what are the pitfalls? Why should they wait? You know, what, what happens with Social Security, I guess? Well, when you're taking Social Security early, like say 62. You can take it as early as what age? 59? 62. 62. 62, okay. 62 unless prior to a disability. Okay. Um, but when you take it early, you're taking a permanent reduction. Um, so you've got to factor that in. Is that reduction going to be enough to sustain your expenses and needs? And now we've been, you know, we're almost at 9% inflation this year. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have, you know, their COLA adjustments and things every year, but to get them through this year, maybe, maybe not. Um, somebody that may want to wait every year, your Social Security is going to grow. Every year, um, an individual's full retirement uh, age changes this year for those that are born and aging into Medicare. They're 66 and six months. So they start Medicare a year and a half prior to, to their full retirement age of Social Security. So what do they do for that year and a half? Again, an individual question that we have to sit down and discuss. Um, so me being a Social Security advisor, um, um, I can help walk them through that. And then we can also talk with Social Security about certain situations. Were they married prior? Can they, call, um, can they draw off of their former husband? Can they draw off their current? You know, there's questions there that they always have. Um, so when those things happen and they say, hey, I want, I want to clock in. I'm ready to, to pull my retirement. I have this IRA or this. This is when Anthony and I begin to work together and I help set up their, their Social Security. And he makes a plan on based around their Social Security income, maybe their IRA income or the 401 income while I am making a plan to make sure their health expenses, their medical expenses, their long-term care is not going to eat away at those funds. So at Bankers, we it's not just me working on right. one case. Right. When I have something and I say, hey, we need somebody else, I'm calling this guy. Yeah. And he comes in and we make a plan together. You know, and I come to him and I say, hey, for Miss Jones, this is going to be her best option this is going to keep these expenses down, but we got to we got to make sure that her long-term care is taken care of here. Born in 1960, my full security, Social Security, is at age 67. Yes. But I can take it at age 62, 63, 64. It's just going to be a little bit less than if I wait till 67 or even Correct. wait till 72. But then when I when I play the math on what I'm going to get at age 63 and I run that for 280 months versus what I want to get at 67 and run that for 240 months. You know, I have to look at that and go, well, that's, yeah, not, some that, people, that's not a big enough difference. I want to retire early and I want to take that. Some people say, hey, I'm missing out. Yeah. I may not live to 65. I may Correct. not live to 70. Right. Right. I, want to, I want my money. And I understand that Show too. me the money. Show me the money. <laughs> so I understand that concept okay. too. And everybody has, you know, and it's not my, you know, Cho uh, choice to you say. Just, you lay it out. I lay Here's it your out. options. Here's your options. You can take this reduction and take it now and have X amount of dollars for th these so many years and months, or you can wait and have this amount of money for so many years and months, but we never know when the time is to go. So it, again, just like he says, it's, it's based on their preference and matter of opinion, and it's my job to lay it out and educate you and show you what your options are. If you're watching this, I can't imagine that you don't have more questions. I can't imagine you not sitting there scratching your head. But we have some very knowledgeable people. They're also going to be available to you, to us, for us, on September the 27th. Bankers Life is sponsoring a plan for a secure retirement. The event is going to be starting at 6 o'clock at the Hale Street Center, 210 Hale Street, downtown Charleston, West Virginia probably lots of things about Social Security. Anthony will be there. Robin will be there. My girl Katie Ford will be there. Yes. She's a licensed agent as well. We, he's not on the show today, but many of us know Sean Taylor as a Social Security guru. He's a Social Security lawyer. He will be on hand that night. Robin, talk a little bit about this event and why you guys are doing this and how can people get involved. We wanted to do this event for the community because especially this year more than ever, you know, like I talked before, we've had more confused retirees and beneficiaries that don't understand their options and their benefits. Okay. And there's n no one else in the, the local area that's doing the education and providing the, the base knowledge of what they need. So we wanted to give them a place where they could feel comfortable and ask questions. Um, of course, those questions will be to the side or, or set a time with us. Um, but we wanted to give a place to where they felt they could get their answers. Mm -hmm 
all in one place. Because when you call Social Security, they say, oh, you have to call Medicare. Yeah. And then Medicare says, oh, well, you need to talk to somebody in the disability department. Or, well, I need to know about my finances. Oh, well, you have to call somebody else. You know, So we wanted to make it a one-stop shop okay. for our local community. Once again, September the 27th, it's called A Plan for a Secure Retirement. It is brought to you by Banker's Life. It'll be held at Hale Street Center, uh, 210 Hale Street, downtown Charleston, West Virginia. All these questions that I've been talking with Robin and Anthony about, uh, Sean's gonna jump in, Katie's gonna jump in, Dennis Harmison will be there. There's no obligations. They're gonna offer you a complimentary dinner. It doesn't cost anything to Absolutely come. Absolutely not. So completely free to come, no obligations. You get a bite to eat and a ton of information and then you get some questions. You may set up a time if they have more questions afterwards, but it's just an opportunity to come meet with you guys, talk about what we've been talking about today in a setting that's kind of face-to-face -face, on a full belly with no obligations and a free seminar brought to you by Bankers Life. Like you said, really just to answer questions and educate you on your secure retirement or how to have one. Is that about the gist of it? You got it. How do, how do people, how do they register and how do they get in touch with you? Is there a telephone number to call or a code or how are we doing that? There's an RSV, RSVP code, okay. uh, 304-928-1975 is the number. I'll do that again, 304-928-1975. And there's an RSVP code, you just text in 1071. Exactly. 1071. And there's another number there as well, 304 304- 444-7702-304-444-7702 and text the code 1071. Or just call the office at Bankers Life and say, hey, I want to come to the seminar. No obligations, it's free. 304-757-4134. That'll get you in touch with Bankers Life and get you to this uh, seminar, complimentary seminar, September 27th, so it's coming up. Hale Street Center, Hale Street, Charleston, West Virginia, right downtown. Hale Street Center, if you've not been there, it's stunning. I love it. You've been there already? Have you, Absolutely. You, yeah, it's, isn't it nice? Anthony, you'll be there, right? I'll be there. Have you been in that Hale Center I before? Have not, no. Yeah, you've been by, you know where it is, yeah. but it's very nice. I've been in there for some trainings. Uh, Craig Allison does a great job with that facility. Uh, Anthony, is there a, a, a parting shot, uh, something that the audience needs to know that I, I haven't asked you that you'd like to uh, leave us with? I mean, you know, in. Uh, in today's economic climate, it's it's very important to communicate with your advisor. You know, if you have concerns, um, you need to reach out. You may have to reevaluate your risk assessment, your risk tolerance, all of those things. Um, but be proactive. If you're if you're not comfortable, you know, reach out, talk to your advisor. Um, I always lay a plan out and say this is my recommendation, but it's not my money. So obviously, your comfort level. I serve you, yeah. so my comfort level is going to be your comfort level. If you're if this is uneasy for you, we're going to make adjustments uh, to that. So if you're having pain, if you open your statements and you don't like what you see, communicate, communicate, communicate. You know, so that's that's a huge thing. You know that you guys can do. I got it. For I got retirement. It. Uh, uh, thank you, Anthony. I got to <laughs> tell you that my mother, sweet mother, she's 84 years old. She has the energy that I do, Robin. That's where I get her from. Is my mom. <laughs> 84, going strong. She opens up her, you know, her savings yeah. account, and she'd been working a long time. Retired, obviously, 84 years old. Quite frankly, they laid her off, or she'd still be working. She's one of those ladies. She'll call me, Jimmy. I, I've lost forty thousand dollars. I go, Mom, did you sell it? No, I didn't sell it. Well, then you didn't, you didn't lose, lose it. it. You're just down forty thousand dollars. Right. <laughs> I'm sure you get lots of those questions, yes. don't you, Anthony? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Robin, do you have a, a parting shot for the audience as we wrap up your financial future? Brought to you by Bankers Life. I'm going to piggyback off him to okay. say, you know, your finances and your and your health are, are very similar. Communicate, communicate, because yeah. your health is going to change year to year. I hope it stays for the best, but, you know, reality is, you know, one in three people have a heart attack. So your mm -hmm. health is going to change. And when that does, you know, don't be afraid to call me because I'm. we have so many options at Bankers. Um, that we can, if we have to make adjustments every year, we can do that. If we have to change a drug plan, if we have to completely change coverage options, we can do that. So I'm with you. You're stuck with me. Once you have me, <laughs> you have me all the way through as long as you allow A life it. partner. A life partner. I love it. And uh, I have several clients that they call me, hey, you know, Mr. Jones, he, he's in the hospital. I need to know what to do. Don't worry. I'll be out there in a couple of days. You just say when. I love it. Robin Hatfield, licensed agent with Bankers Life an investment advisor with Bankers Life. 
Anthony Titus. I appreciate you being with us today. The very first edition, the first episode of Your Financial Future for a Secure Retirement brought to you by Banker's Life. There's no life like the banker's life. Give them a call one more time, 304-757-4134. We'll see you on September 27th. Make sure you call RSVP 1071 or just call the Banker's Life office and say, hey, what about this seminar on September 27th? No obligations. It's free to come and you're feeding me. I'm going to be there. We hope to see you the next time right here on Your Financial Future. And we hope to see you on September 27th. You folks take care.